Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Lessons of Vietnam show. Here we try to dispel the myths uh, and, and misunderstandings of the Vietnam War and the story of the men and women who fought in the war, participated in the war one way or the other. I am your host, Bill Dixon, Vietnam veteran 67 68, uh, Tet Offensive uh, survivor. We are broadcasting from Nissan Communication Studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, Worldwide Studios. Uh, for We invite you to call in, take part in the show, make comments, uh, good or bad. Let us know if we're doing something, if we're saying something that you don't disagree with. We'd love to talk to you about it. Uh, comments and suggestions, as you can see there, uh, our number is 919-519-9773. 518. Good thing when I was looking after me, it's not, let me do that all over again now, real slow. 919-518-9773. Or even better, come in on Skype, and that's Computers 2K Voice. Come in and let us know what you think about the show. Uh, make comments about what's going on in the show. Whatever it is you want to be part of the show, just let us know you're out there and we're, like I said, we're trying to tell the truth uh, about the Vietnam War and those of us who were there. And there's so much junk out there. You can go online and improve anything, whether it's right or wrong. Uh, as you see there, we're very uh, interested in the um, <laughs> the uh, Veterans Crisis Line. If you're uh, a veteran or you know a veteran that's uh, having problems uh, have them call this number to some good people on the other line who are not who want nothing better to uh, talk with a veteran, or if you're a family member of a veteran, talk to them and uh, uh, get some relief and so forth. So I uh, hope if you're out there, uh, it's all confidential, and call them up and have a chat with them. Okay. Our show tonight is going to be about the Medal of Honor. Uh, putting this together, I learned several things that I didn't know myself. Uh, I've got a lot of reading there, but let me read it to you. Uh, the Medal of Honor is the United States of America's highest and most prestigious personal, personal military decoration that may be awarded to recognize U.S. Medal, military service members who distinguish themselves by acts of valor. The medal is normally awarded by the President of the United States in the name of the U.S. Congress, which creates some uh, confusion there. Because the medal is presented in the name of Congress, it is often referred to informally as the Congressional Medal of Honor. However, the official name of the current award is Medal of Honor, not Congressional Medal of Honor. I hear people every day say that, and I want to stand up and say no. It's the Medal of Honor, not the Congressional, uh, but I, had, I probably get hit in the nose. Uh, there have been 19 people awarded multiple Medals of Honor. All of those were prior to 1918 when stricter regulations were placed on awarding the medal. And to get the medal, there has to be other people there, and there is a timeline. So you'll see as we go through the show, some of the Medal of Honor winners waited 30-some years or better to find out um, whether they qualified for the medal and so forth. And I did not realize, but there was th there's three different medals. The Army's uh, Medal of Honor, the Navy's Medal of Honor, and the Air Force has a Medal of Honor. And the uh, Air Force, of course, since they were part of the Army, uh, is very similar uh, in, in looks, but there's three different, uh, three different versions of it. Now, it is a military award, as I said, and civilians are not eligible to receive it. This is true to an extent. Civilians have won it before, uh, but they can't now. Several civilians won the medal for acts during the Civil War. Many of these medals were struck from the record during the period of from 1916 to 1919 as the services refined what the Medal of Honor would be awarded for. A few civilians did get their medals reinstated in the 18, 1980s and 1990s. A Navy civilian ship pilot Martin Freeman and John Farrell and Army civilian scout William Woodall. And Mary Walker, who was a surgeon at the Battle of Bull Run, uh, the only woman to get the medal so far, but uh, she had received the medal. It was taken back, and then she was, uh, they gave it back to her. 
A civilian can't receive it now, but there are still civilians who are legitimate recipients, as we just shown there. Uh, so it is basically on military. Now, like everything else the government uh, does, it seems to be uh, several first. Everybody's the first. In 3rd of March, 1847, Congress authorizes a certificate of merit be presented by the president when a private soldier distinguished himself in the service along with an additional pay of $2 a month. Now, back in 1847, that was probably uh, not bad, uh, but it's, you know, even then, $2 a month, I mean, extra. Uh, I don't know what you could do with $2 back then, but February 13th of February, 1861, Army Assistant Surgeon Bernard J.D. Irwin rescues the 60 soldiers of 2nd George Bascom's unit at Apache Pass, Arizona. Uh, you get the idea that was probably against the Indians. Though the Medal of Honor had not been processed in Congress and actually wouldn't even be presented to Irwin until 1894, it was the first heroic act for which the Medal of Honor would be awarded. Now, that was the, fir that was the first act. It was not necessarily the first award of the Medal of Honor. 26th of June, 1861, aboard the USS Pawnee, Captain John Williams, uh, courage despite his wounds, his refusal to leave any man behind, and his love for the flag became the first act by a member of the U.S. Navy to merit the Medal, Navy Medal of Honor. Now, the other guy was first, but this is the first Navy guy. See how he, uh, these first can get kind of confusing? For this action, Williams awarded the Medal of Honor nearly two years later on April 3rd, 1863. His was the earliest action for which a Navy Medal of Honor was awarded, but he was not the first to receive the medal. Several Navy men who performed later actions were awarded the medal before him, the first being Robert Williams. So he did the first act, but other people like Robert Williams received, actually received the medal before he did. At least they kept it in the Williams family. The first Medal of Honor was awarded to Private Jacob Perot. 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 We're going to call it Perot. Of the Union States in April 1865 for sneaking behind Confederate lines to blow up the railroad depot. Now that's his picture. As you can see, it's been colorized. Uh, uh, several pictures have been because there weren't no color pictures back then. And there you can see uh, his grave site. Medal of Honor, First Lieutenant, uh, Company K, 31st Ohio Infantry, Civil War, 1843, and he died in 1908. Okay. Private First Class Jacqueline Harold Lucas went AWOL from Pearl Harbor and stowed away on the USS Duell, which bound for Iwo Jima. That probably was not a good ship to go AWOL and stow away on. He turned himself in to the troop commander who assigned him to the headquarters company. On the day after the landing, he earned his Medal of Honor as the youngest Marine to win the Medal of Honor in World War II. He had turned 17 one week earlier. He was discharged with the, without the Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal on disability. Uh, he went AWOL, so he didn't get the Good Conduct Medal, but he won the Medal of Honor. And there you can see his picture then and his picture now. and. Um, you can see it's, he's kind of an old guy now. Uh, excuse me, he has passed away. But, um, okay, we'll just let that go at that. Uh, this is during the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, uh, the, you know, the Gulf of Tonkin, as we all know now from seeing the show, didn't really happen. But the ships were firing and a lot of things were going on. Uh, on July 6, 1964, Captain Roger Donlan routed his men and led the defense of his camp. Despite serious wounds while under fierce attack near Nam Dong, South Vietnam, Donlan was awarded the Medal of Honor on December 5, 1964, making him the first recipient of the Medal of, of Honor during the Vietnam War. Uh, the Gulf of uh, Tonkin Resolution was passed August 10, 1964. So uh, he, actually, he actually received his uh, actions that 
gave him the uh, Medal of Honor was done before we were at war with uh, Vietnam. So he was a one, she saw the picture there was a one man army. Uh, this one, uh, if you saw the movie, we were soldiers once and in, in, in young, uh, his, his code name on that was snake. And, uh, uh, major Bruce Crandall made over 20 flights in, into the intense enemy fire during the battle of the Audrain Valley. That was the listed as the first big, uh, the biggest first battle of Vietnam, even though there were some pretty good sized battles for that. In November 1965, evacuating 70 wounded and delivering ammunition. Uh, if you saw in, if you saw the movie, you could see get the idea just how much intense fire was. There's a picture, his late picture uh, there, and that's his picture when he was flying in Vietnam. The battle was later dramatized in a film. We were soldiers. On February 26, 2007, Crandall received the Medal of Honor. Now, he did that back in 1965, and I think the movie, We Were Soldiers, uh, Once and Young, had a lot to do with uh, coming back and getting the Medal of Honor because uh, he was depicted as, as what he did, and uh, the powers that be went back and looked, and uh, I think that had a lot to do with him getting the Medal of Honor because it was 2007 after the movie came out. Uh, okay. Now, here's another one. Uh, on November 14th, 1965, same battle. And he was also, his uh, was also uh, dramatized in We Were Soldiers. Captain Ed Freeman. Now, they called him Too Tall in the movie because he was too tall to be a helicopter pilot, but he was. Uh, he made repeated flights in the Ardrain Valley on intense fire to bring in supplies and evacuate the wounded. Due to his statute of limitations being lifted, Freeman was ordered the Medal of Honor on July 16th, 2001. Okay. Uh, in other words, there's a time limit, but they went back and said that this man deserves the Medal of Honor, so they turned back around and uh, waived the uh, time restraints and uh, awarded him for his actions Medal of Honor. Okay. Now, this is a man I know. He is a super gentleman, uh, lives here in North Carolina. Uh, if you saw the movie, if you saw the movie, uh, we were soldiers once you did not see anything about Joe Marm on the movie. Uh, he was actually kind of uh, put into two different lieutenants, but he was there. I'll tell you in a minute why he was not in the movie. Second Lieutenant Walter J. Marm Jr. Led attack against a heavily fortified enemy forces on November 14th, 1965, personally knocking out several positions in the Ardrang Valley, South Vietnam. He was presented with the Medal of Honor on December 19, 1966. And three years later, he volunteered for his second tour of duty in Vietnam. Now, why was he not in the movie? During his uh, one man uh, attack on uh, several uh, machine gun uh, nests, he was shot in the jaw. Well, the movie was primarily about Joe Galloway, and, uh, who was a reporter. And the commander of uh, Hal Moore uh, of the of the group of uh, Seventh Cavalry. Well, Joe was put on the helicopter to go out with the wounded as Joe Galloway was coming in as a reporter. So that's one reason he was uh, kind of left out of the movie. But um, his actions were very important to uh, keep him going uh, as the, after they first got there. But he is quite a gentleman. Uh, on December eighteenth, nineteen sixty five. Harvey Barney Barnum took control when his unit was killed. His unit commander was killed in Quang Tin Province, South Vietnam, directing a counterattack and a withdrawal. He was presented with the Medal of Honor on February 27, 1967. But it would take years for the fragments of that day to come together in his memory. It was so intense that uh, it was just kind of parts and parts and pieces. Now, I am just giving you the basics of uh, these guys, what they did and so forth. I highly recommend that you go back and read their stories and find out the, uh, really what all these guys did uh, to earn these Medal of Honors. I hope I can just kind of pique your interest a little bit. Uh, Army medic Alfred Rascom himself injured, tended to wounded while under devastating fire in Long Kong, Providence on March 16, 1966. On February 8, 2000, after a re-evaluation of his recommendation prompted by the men in his battalion, 
he received the Medal of Honor. Now, this means that as a medic, he uh, did the actions, uh, wounded himself, uh, but he took care of his men, uh, was not put in for the Medal of Honor, or he may have been put in for the Medal of Honor, but the uh, whoever decides on who gets it and who does not get it uh, did not reward it, but through the action of his crew, they came back in and he received it, as it says, re-evaluation re re of his uh, situation. Okay. On March 28, 1966, Navy Corpsman Robert Ingram tended to wounded Marines and held off the enemy under intense fire in Quang Nai Providence, South Vietnam. With the help of many of his company who insisted that his recommendation be re-evaluated, Ingram received the Medal of Honor on July 10, 1998. As you can see, the picture of him there is a young uh, Vietnam medic, and you can see as he's kind of uh, got a little bit uh, more mature. Okay. Uh, on June 19, 1966, just two weeks after arriving in Vietnam. Now, when two weeks after you get arriving in Vietnam, you don't even know, you don't know nothing about uh, surviving in Vietnam. But here's a guy, two weeks in Vietnam, First Lieutenant Ronald Ray led his unit in a rescue of trapped soldiers in Audrang Valley, South Vietnam. He then covered his men from an ex exploding grenade. He spent six months recuperating from his injuries and was presented with the Medal of Honor on May 14, 1970. So here's a young lieutenant to protect his men, uh, evidently dropped on the grenade or tried to get it out or whatever to protect his men, uh, spent six months uh, paying the price in the hospital. So, okay. On July 1966, Staff Sergeant John McGinty III Covered a Marine withdrawal in Quang Tri Providence, South Vietnam. Although wounded, he defended the troops against an overwhelmingly enemy force. President Johnson presented McGinty with the Medal of Honor on March 12, 1968. In July 1966, Captain Robert OK. Uh, Amlin, you got an idea? We're going to call him Maud. Okay, uh, I apologize if you're out there listening, Captain, but I don't have a madras. Yeah, okay, we're just going to leave it there. Uh, led a defense against a fierce enemy counterattack in Quang Tri Province, South Vietnam, calling in artillery and air on his own position. He was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions on March 12, 1968. Pretty strike young Marine there. Athens unit was ambushed near the demilitarized zone. That was the zone that between North and South Vietnam. Uh, on July 24, 1966, Glance Corporal Richard Pittman destroyed numerous enemy positions, and he was awarded the Medal of Honor on May 14, 1968. On August 8, 1966, Captain Howard Lee came to the rescue of a besieged Marine unit near Camlo, South Vietnam. Though wounded himself, he took charge of the unit and led a successful defense. Now, as you can see in the picture, he was in the Army. But he went in and uh, took over a Marine unit uh, and, got them, and got them out and went to uh, successful defense. On October 25, 1967, he received the Medal of Honor. On November 1966, Captain Robert Foley led a fight to rescue a besieged American unit single-handedly, destroying several enemy positions near Quang Da Ting, South Vietnam. As a result of this recommendation of his soldiers, Foley was awarded the Medal of Honor on May 1, 1968. Private First Class John Baker, Jr. Now, if you're looking at the picture down there, uh, he looks like a shrimp with, with uh, Lyndon Johnson, but Lyndon Johnson was a tall guy. I don't think he was quite quite that compared to everybody else, but he was short. Uh, Private First Class John Baker Jr. destroyed six enemy bunkers and saved eight comrades during a firefight to relieve a besieged unit in Tainan, Providence, South Vietnam, on November 5, 1966. On May 1, 1968, President Johnson awarded him the Medal of Honor. 
With, when his fellow pilot crashed into Ashaw Valley on March 10th, 1966, now the Ashaw Valley was a uh, big North Vietnamese uh, hangout. Major Bernard Fisher knew that a rescue chopper wouldn't reach him in time, so Fisher called off the rescue and landed on the brief littered runway himself. He made it back with the other pilot and on January 19th, 1967, became the first airman in Vietnam to receive the Medal of Honor. Specialist Charles Hagenmaster took charge of his platoon after an ambush in Binh Dinh, Providence, South Vietnam, on March 20th, 1967. Tending to the wounded and destroyed in enemy positions on May 14th, 1968, Hagenmaster was awarded the Medal of Honor. You can see his picture down there uh, as a young soldier. On March 21st, 1967, First Sergeant David McNerney, himself seriously wounded, took command of his unit under intense fire and directly uh, directed artillery and air support during the attack on the Pulley Dock, South Vietnam. Pre uh, President Johnson Award presented him the, with the Medal of Honor on September 19, 1968. On April 19, 1967, Major Leo Thorsness destroyed at least one enemy plane while leading a desperate rescue attempt to a, to a downed crew member. Two weeks later, he was shot down and taken prisoner off North Vietnam. After six years of captivity and torture, Thorness received the Medal of Honor on October 15, 1973. And you can see him there as a POW, and you can see him there uh, with his Medal of Honor. Trying to break through a Viet Cong strong, uh, strange hole, stranglehold near uh, Duc Vo, South Vietnam, on April 25th, 1967, Specialist Ken Stump charged forward to rescue three of his men pinned down by intense fire. He was awarded the Medal of Honor by President Johnson on September 19th, 1968. And I want to call your attention to that uniform he's in down there, all those stripes. That man has been in the service a long time. Look at those stripes. That's uh, uh, he had to be quite a quite a soldier. Uh, uh, this uh, kind of uh, strange uh, is from what he is there with his Medal of Honor, and you look at his picture while he was in the military. Then you look at his later picture. Uh, he turned into a hippie. It looks like uh, on May second, nineteen sixty-seven, after his unit came to the rescue of another unit that had been ambushed, Private First Class Leonard Keller seized the initiative, destroying the enemy positions near the outback zone in South Vietnam. Keller was awarded the Medal of Honor at the White House on September 1968. Okay, now this one uh, is a guy of interest. Uh, if you saw the movie uh, Forrest Gump, on November 18, 1967, Private First Class Sammy Davis, wounded in an intense enemy fire, crossed the river to rescue three wounded soldiers near Calais, Vietnam. On November 19, 1968, Davis received the Medal of Honor. The footage from that day, as well as Davis' citation, was used as sources materials for the film Forrest Gump. As you can see in the picture there, the real Forrest Gump. That's he uh, he's claiming that that uh, title up there, but um, so uh, you saw you saw him receive the medal uh, in far by Forrest Gump on November 9th, nineteen sixty seven. First Lieutenant James Taylor pulled wounded men from exploding vehicles while establishing an evacuation site and resupply effort near Quan Sun, South Vietnam. Taylor was awarded the Medal of Honor on November, and for some reason the date disappeared. Forgive me for that one. Uh, I, evident, see, I want to prove, I just did that to prove to y'all that I was not perfect, uh, other than I can't say some of these words. After coming to the rescue of an ambushed American unit on December 15, 1967, Specialist Alan Lynch dragged wounded soldiers to safety while under fire near Ma'an, Binh Dinh, South Vietnam. On March 14, 1970, President Nixon presented Lynch with the Medal of Honor. Have you noticed how good looking these young soldiers are? And then they turn into some old men. I can't understand that. 
On intense fire in early 1968, Staff Sergeant Drew Dix led the liberation of Chaopu, uh, rescuing indigenous forces, that is where natives, uh, and a U.S. nurse. He was presented with the Medal of Honor by President Johnson on January 16, 1969, making him the fourth recipient from his small hometown of uh, Pueblo, Colorado. Four recipients from the uh, from Pueblo, California, and that's his picture on the radio, uh, getting everything done. Dust off helicopter pilot uh, Patrick Brady made multiple evacuations of wounded soldiers in bad weather and intense fire on near Chulai, South Vietnam, on January 6, 1968. He received the Medal of Honor on October 9, 1969, and that's him hanging, uh, leaning up against the helicopter. And you got to see that red star there. That is a good target for the bad guys. Coming in with that uh, medevac uh, red star, uh, I mean, that was like, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me. And also, they didn't have any any guns on there, so they couldn't shoot back. But uh, those guys did an awesome job. On January 8, 1968, helicopter door gunner Gary Wetzel was seriously wounded when his chopper was shot down near Op Dong An, South Vietnam, and, and he was hit by a homemade grenade. Despite his injuries, Wetzel destroyed a key enemy position while evacuating the wounded. He received the Medal of Honor from President Johnson on November 19, 1968. You can see the picture there with the prosthetic arm. And uh, I can't buy, figure out how he got by with all that hair that he's got down there in his, in his military picture. Um, that must have been right after he came from Vietnam because that is not a um, regulation haircut. Uh, yeah. On January 10th, 1968, Army medic Clarence Sasser, himself injured, moved from wounded soldier to wounded soldier in a fierce firefight in the Mekong Delta of South Vietnam. The Medal of Honor was presented to him by President Nixon on March 7th, 1969. And you can see there his uh, earlier picture in the soldier. And I'm not certain where that statue of him is at, uh, but that's him standing beside the statue. But that is a statue honoring him. Uh, as a Medal of Honor recipient, uh, and what are, I don't, but I don't know exactly what town he was from. So, on January 31st, 1968, at the beginning of the Tet Offensive, Chief Warrant Officer Frederick Ferguson flew his helicopter through intense fire to rescue trapped Americans in Way, South Vietnam. He was awarded the Medal of Honor on May 17th, 1969. Now, doing Tet. Uh, Way was probably the some of the most intense fighting uh, anywhere during the Tet Offensive. Uh, as you can see there, he was uh, born in uh, Pilot Point, uh, Tennessee. Uh, he was in the United States Army. Uh, he was in the military service from 58 to eight, uh, 1982, uh, Cavalry Division, Air Mobile, 1st Calf. Okay. Under heavy fire on February 22nd, 1969, specialists, George Lang led his squad and destroyed several enemy positions attacking the American forces in uh, Kahoa province, South Vietnam. Lang's spine was severed by shrapnel during the attack, leaving him a paraplegic. He was awarded the Medal of Honor on March 2nd, 1971. He also has a nice, had a nice haircut. Uh, in March 1968, Captain Paul Butcher personally directed the successful defense of his besieged unit near Phuc Vinh, South Vietnam, until they could safely withdraw. He received the Medal of Honor on May 14, 1970, and you can see him there on the radio calling in for um, uh, a sport or whatever. But um, good-looking young guy. Although seriously wounded, First Lieutenant Jack Jacobs dragged 13 fellow soldiers to safety after an ambush in Ken Fong, Providence, South Vietnam. On March 9th, 1968, he was awarded the Medal of Honor on October 9th, 1969. Now, if you notice a pattern there, quite often these guys who go above and beyond what you would think anybody else would do were wounded in the process. These guys didn't lay down and say, I'm wounded, come take care of me. 
they went on and did and performed uh, admirably and then some to save their fellow soldiers' uh, lives quite often. Uh, Captain James Livingston personally led a Marine assault against a heavily defended enemy on May 1st, 1968, overrunning the uh, positions in Daudo, Vietnam. Livingston was awarded the Medal of Honor on May 14th, 1970. On May 2nd, 1968, after three days of intense fighting in the village of Daldo, heard of that before, hadn't you? Uh, Captain J. Vargas rescued a fellow Marine and dragged his wounded battalion commander over to over 100 yards to an evacuation point, firing an enemy as he went. He received the Medal of Honor on May 14, 1970. Again, that was two men who received the uh, Medal of Honor just at that same, at that same battle. On May 12, 1968, Lieutenant Colonel Joe Jackson flew his transport, uh, transport aircraft into a besieged Special Forces camp at Camdock, South Vietnam, rescuing three combat controllers. And those were guys who were calling in the fire uh, forward controllers. President Johnson awarded the Medal of Honor to Jackson on January 16, 1969. Now, look at that. That's, he was a lieutenant colonel, and men needed it. Uh, it wasn't like they were all sitting back. Uh, the officers uh, were sitting back in the safety. Here's a lieutenant colonel was flying and landed to uh, un- intense fire to uh, save his soldiers. On May 16th, Navy Corpsman Donald Ballard threw himself on a grenade to save the wounded men he was treating in Quang Tri Providence, South Vietnam. Thankfully, the grenade had a defective fuse and only exploded when, after a few moments without an explosion, exploded when after a few moments without an explosion. In other words, it just kind of poofed. He threw it into the air. Battle received the Medal of Honor on May 14, 1970. But it was willing to drop him on that grenade to save his, his uh, wounded comrades. That's his picture in the Navy, uh, and him is uh, more mature. Staff Sergeant Nikki Bacon led assaults on numerous enemy bunkers to relieve a unit under fierce attack near Tom Key, South Vietnam, on August 26, 1968. Bacon received the Medal of Honor from President Nixon on November 24, 1969. There he is as a young man. He was a good-looking young man as a soldier. While on long-range reconnaissance patrols, that's called LERPs, uh, deep into enemy territory on November 26, 1968, Special Operations Helicopter Pilot James Fleming rescued a surrounded patrol in Cambodia under heavy fire. Fleming received the Medal of Honor at the White House on May 14, 1970. These helicopter pilots would take these uh, special forces, or long-range reconnaissance, and drop them off, uh, probably maybe five or six men, drop them off out and the boonies and, and surrounded by bad guys, and uh, they're well outgunned. And when they get into a problem, these guys fly back in an intense fire from the Viet from the, uh, uh, Cong or in Cambodia, some of the Cambodians or whatever, uh, to rescue those men. As you can see there, he's a uh, quite dapper young man uh, there with his um, dark mustache. And despite serious wounds on December 28, 1968, Sergeant First Class Robert Howard directed his Special Forces troops against the superior enemy force in South Vietnam. Howard received the Medal of Honor from President Nixon on March 2, 1971. On January 11, 1969, First Lieutenant Harold Fritz repelled an enemy ambush under withering crossfire near Quang Loi, South Vietnam, leading the fence until reinforcements arrived. On March 2nd, 1971, Fritz received the Medal of Honor. As you can see them as a young skinny kid, I received the Medal of Honor from Nixon with his family standing by. While seriously wounded, First Lieutenant Wesley Fox led his company in a direct attack against the superior forces in the Aishal Valley, South Vietnam, which was not a good place to be at any time. On February 21st and 22nd, in 1969. He received the Medal of Honor on March 2nd, 1971. As you can see him sitting there reading uh, probably a hometown paper 
sometime before the battle. But look at those medals and on his chest. Uh, he had to be a soldier's soldier. Despite serious wounds, Lieutenant Joseph Bob Carey led his Navy SEAL team on a daring attack into enemy territory on March 14, 1969, near Nha Trang Bay, South Vietnam. Carey was awarded the Medal of Honor on May 4, 1970, and went on to become the governor of Nebraska and later a U.S. senator. As you can see him there in his, uh, in his uh, dive gear and then as a young um, uh, JAG officer or whatever he is, young Navy SEAL, excuse me, but uh, that's him as a United States senator. So, On June 15, 1969, Lieutenant Thomas Kelly's Riverine boats were attacked in uh, Kenwa Province, South Vietnam. Despite his being seriously wounded, he would continue to direct, to direct the battle. President Nixon awarded the Kelly of the Medal of Honor on May 14, 1970. Now, the Riverine boats could have been uh, one of the swift boats uh, like John Kerry was on, or it could have been the Brown, uh, when the uh, PBRs, uh, Patrol Boat Rivers, uh, which earlier, uh, I guess, some time ago was on uh, Al Ely, uh, had a flat bottom, well, kind of a flat bottom to it, uh, not totally flat, but it had a little bit of groove in it uh, out there. So I don't know which, which kind of boat he was on, uh, but you can see him there in his Navy uniform, uh, and then you can see him there as, as with his Medal of Honor. So under fire in Ashaw Valley. Now, keep, we keep talking about Ashaw Valley. That was, as I said, it was a bad place. Under fire in Ashaw Valley, South Vietnam, on July 11, 1969, Specialist Gordon Roberts destroyed three enemy bunkers while relieving a pinned-down unit and evacuating wounded. He received the Medal of Honor on March 2, 1971, as you can see there, and also as a young man, uh, receiving his uh, Medal of Honor from uh, Richard Nixon, who was president at that time. On October 2nd, 1969, dust off helicopter pilot Michael Novosel made repeated trips without air cover or, or fire support to save 29 wounded soldiers under constant enemy fire in Kong Tong province of South Vietnam on June 5th, 1971. He was awarded the Medal of Honor. Uh, there he is, is uh, uh, with his Medal of Honor. He's standing there with it by in front of his helicopter. And that is a uh, book he wrote, uh, Dust Off. You might want to get that and read it, a member of an Army aviator. But I can tell you, going in to pick up 29 soldiers, that was more than one trip. It was several trips, and you're flying in. You don't have much armor, and you have to sit there with those bullets cracking all around you and through your helicopter uh, to get those 29 men. So he and his crew uh, did quite a thing to get those 29 soldiers out. On February 10th, 1970, Specialist John Baca dove on a grenade thrown near his fire position in Phuc Long province, South Vietnam, saving his fellow soldiers. Baca received the Medal of Honor on June 15th, 1971. He returned to Vietnam in 1990 and worked alongside former enemy soldiers to build a United States Vietnam Friendship Clinic. So obviously he survived uh, dropping on the grenade. Uh, I didn't say, didn't, that does not say how long he spent in the hospital, how bad he was hurt, but uh, uh, he went back to Vietnam and, uh, and built the uh, friendship clinic there, uh, which was quite a feat for a guy that uh, dropped on a grenade to help save somebody. On March 11th, 1970, Staff Sergeant Alan Kellogg Jr. was commanding a 14-man squad in Quang Nam Province, South Vietnam, after covering a grenade that exploded and seriously wounded him, he resumed control of his men and led them to, uh, to the Marine Company that had been waiting. He received the Medal of Honor on October 15, 1973. You know, we always hear about people dropping on grenades, but we don't really think it, that it happened. But uh, we've had several uh, today we've talked about uh, who uh, threw themselves on a grenade and uh, was quite often seriously wounded. Uh, this is Special Forces Medic Gary uh, Bickwich, uh, Amnon tells me, uh, treated wounded, uh, treated wounded in 
Indigenous, indigenous, yes. Uh, indigenous are, are uh, local soldiers. They were probably, could have been uh, Vietnamese. They could have been uh, some Laotians. It could have been Montagnards, Hmongs. But they were, uh, anyway, indigenous soldiers. Uh, under intense firing in Con on Kantum Providence, South Vietnam, on April 1st, 1971. He presented with the Medal of Honor on October 15th, 1973. Kantum Providence was a, uh, in, in the early 70s, was quite a, um, also a pla quite a place to be. Uh, we've had uh, guests on the show talking quite a bit uh, about the Kantum Providence. Uh, Sergeant First Class Gary Littrell took charge of a South Vietnamese Ranger unit on April 4th, 1970 which was a feat into itself. For the next four days, he directed his defense and evacuation under fire in Kong Tung Providence, South Vietnam. President Nixon awarded him with the Medal of Honor on October 15, 1973. Now look at that haircut. On March 23, 1971, Specialist Michael Fitzmaurice jumped on an enemy sapper charge in Quezon, South Vietnam, saving the lives of his fellow soldiers. He then continued to fight with serious wounds. He was hospitalized for the next 13 months, but on October 15, 1973, he traveled to the White House where he was awarded the Medal of Honor. Now, here was a man that spent 13 months in a hospital, but before they sent him, he was up helping uh, fight and save his extra soldiers. Sapper charge is uh, basically where the bad guys have a bag of explosions. Sappers are people who uh, could be American sappers or it could be North Vietnamese sappers. It's like having a, uh, a cloth bag with explosives in it they would, with a handle. You could just pick it up and throw. You pull a cord and it sets off a fuse and throw it. It's uh, a little easier to handle uh, for big things uh, than a grenade. On March 31st, 1971, First Lieutenant Brian Thacker covered the withdrawal of his unit at the massive enemy attack in Kantum Province, South Vietnam, calling artillery in on his own position. He was cut off from his comrades and remained hidden for the next eight days without food or water. On October 15th, 1973, President Nixon presented him with the Medal of Honor. What this is saying here, folks, is his unit left and we get away, able to get away safely because he stayed there and called in bombs and, air, and the fast airplanes uh, strafing and so forth on himself. But when it was all over, he couldn't, he couldn't get back to his unit because he was still probably surrounded by the bad guys. So he had to hide for eight days with no food and water until he could finally uh, get his way back. Staff Sergeant John Caviani organized and led an aggressive defense when his force came under fierce attack near Quezon, South Vietnam, on June 4th and 5th, 1971. He evaded capture for 11 days, but was eventually taken as a POW. He was released in 1973. He had heard that he had been recommended for the Medal of Honor, and it was awarded to him on December 12th, 1974. Uh, you can see him as a young, uh, young soldier as a POW. But he had heard while he was a POW that he was been received the Medal of Honor. In April 1972, Navy SEAL Thomas Norris led a daring rescue effort to retrieve downed American airmen in Quang Tri Providence, South Vietnam. When he rescued, when the rescue was finally declassified, Norris's actions were, were reviewed, and he was awarded the Medal of Honor on March 6, 1976. A lot of things that the Navy SEALs did were classified for so many years, uh, and some of them uh, just came from unclassified. But it was, uh, it was like going into Laos. He was not officially there. He never was there officially. On March 31st, 1972, Navy SEAL Michael Thornton was on a mission near Cuba Viet River Base in South Vietnam. In the course of a five-hour firefight, Thornton himself injured, carried two wounded comrades to safety. On April, October 15, 1973, Thornton received his Medal of Honor. One of his, injuries, one of his injured comrades, Lieutenant Thomas Norris, 
received the award three years later. Shot down in a secret mission during the Vietnam War, Major George Bud Day was captured and resisted severe torture as a POW in the Hanoi Hilton from 1967 to 1973. Three years after his release on March 6, 1976, Day was presented with the Medal of Honor along with his fellow uh, POW Admiral James Stockdale. But that's a picture of Bud Day getting off the uh, airplane, coming in, uh, bringing the POWs back in 73, and his wife uh, greeting him. Uh, but uh, he had, that mission also was secret. So uh, during the eight years of imprisonment in North Vietnam, including three years of solitary confinement camp in James Stockdale, was a similar defiance, organizing the other POWs and refusing to serve as a tool for Vietnamese, Vietnamese propaganda. Stockdale received the Medal of Honor three years after his release on March 6, 1976. Now, James Stockdale basically kept the military chain of command going. They were going to put him on, on uh, uh, TV and record him uh, making a uh, confession and so forth. But he picked up a stool and broke it up and beat himself in the face so much they couldn't put him on. Also, if you do a little research, he was actually a spy in the, in the Hanoi Hilton. Uh, on the, after they found out he was there, he would write, was able to write letters to his wife. His wife, working with the Pentagon, sent secret messages. So there's a, a book out there, a story out there, calling uh, The Secret Spy and Hanoi Hilton. Uh, the bottom picture, is you can see him uh, as a prisoner in Hanoi Hilton, uh, he underwent uh, quite a bit of torture because when he directed uh, the, the other men there to do something and they did it, uh, he always got to blame. So, quite a man. Now, this is uh, uh, Captain Hubert Roque, Roque, Roque Versace. Now, I know him as Rocky. Uh, although Versace was nominated for the Medal of Honor in 1969, the attempt failed and Versace received the posthumously Civil Star instead. It was only when the Friends of Rocky Versace reinitiated the cause of the getting of Versace a much-deserved Medal of Honor did the matter come back into light. When Nick Rowe, who spent five years, great book, by the way, Five Years of Freedom, you definitely need to get that because he talks about uh, being in the jungles, in the tiger cages, uh, being a POW. He never got to Hanoa Hilton. He was out in the jungle with the snakes, mosquitoes, heat and humidity, and so forth. But when he, uh, when uh, Nick Rowe came back, he met with uh, President Nixon uh, and begged Nixon to award uh, Rocky Versace for his actions uh, as a POW. Uh, but nothing ever happened out of it, even though Nixon said he would uh, uh, follow through. Finally, in 2002, in the Defense Authorization Act ended the standoff by awarding the Medal of Honor, the most prestigious mil uh, military decoration for combat battle to Versace. On July 8, 2002, in a ceremony in the East Room of the White House, President George W. Bush awarded Versace a posthumous Medal of Honor for his heroic actions. This is the first time in history that an Army POW had ever been awarded the very highest military distinction was showing immense courage in the face of his captivity. He put up such a fight. He understood Vietnamese, but he didn't tell his captives. And he uh, did opposite of whatever they told him to do. He argued with them while they were giving him the um, speeches and so forth about being becoming a good communist. He put up such a fight in captivity that Viet Cong executed him out of frustration. Nick Rowe mentions in his book as they were leading uh, Versace away to assassinate him, he was singing to the top of his lungs, God bless America. And they later come back and told that uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was killed. Uh, then nobody ever saw him again. Now, this is another one that uh, we have talked about before. Sil Richard Rick Riscorda. Riscorda. He was all he was uh there you see he was actually 
the soldier that they used for the picture, and we were soldiers once. I put this in, even though he did not receive the Medal of Honor. Uh, I thought maybe he uh, still uh, deserved recognition. Sir Richard Rick Rescorda was killed in action by a terrorist who flew an airliner into a World Trade Center two building, uh, a trade, trade Center two building on 11 September 2001. Before he died, Rick's action allowed all but 13 of Morgan Stanley's 2,700 World Trade Center employees to survive the terrorist attack. He went back in to get those 13 and never came out. They have never found any signs of his remains at all. He was not supposed to be there that day. He was uh, actually supposed to be on an airplane going to uh, his wife's uh, daughter's uh, wedding. On March 25th, 2009, Rick was awarded the Above and Beyond Citizen Medal, the most prestigious civilian award in America. Every year on National Medal of Honor Day, the three United States citizens are awarded the Above and Beyond Citizens Honor. They received this award from a group of Americans whose actions have defined the word courage if fewer than 100 living members of Congressional Medal of Honor Society. But uh, he was quite a soldier there at the Idrang Valley. He uh, came in to help uh, reinforce uh, Colonel Moore uh, and his group there and uh, actually sang to keep his soldiers calm uh, overnight so they could join the group. Uh, and he also uh, sang when he was re- 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 finding the uh, people in the World Trade Center. Okay. Medal of Honor recipients will attest to this. Extraordinary events motivate ordinary people to do extraordinary things. On and off the battlefield, crisis forms a stage on which valorous actions takes place. But extraordinary acts are possible only if ordinary people rise to the challenge of the moment and if society's value is sacrificed. Lincoln is quoted as asserting that any nation that does not honor its heroes will not long endure. What is important is not to extol the acts of an honorable few, but to imbue Americans with the understanding that if our objective is to protect freedom and our way of life, each of us has an obligation to the community. Some of this information that I've given you tonight was, uh, uh, I took it from an article uh, from a blog by uh, John Pulaski. Uh, John has been on the show. Uh, by the way, if you go to Cherry's uh, blog, you can uh, see his blogs every day. Uh, he does a fantastic job with information out. Uh, Cherry's was his first book. It's a great book to read. And then he uh, just recently came out with his uh when can I stop running? Uh, a kind of a personal story of him uh, being in Vietnam and so forth and coming home. Actually, the Cherries was um, uh, written about himself, but the publisher said, "No, you're gonna have to change your change the name, be somebody else. And you can't. You have to be a third person. You can't be a first person in the book." So, if you get a chance to go on to and and see Cherry, uh, Cherries, uh, the blog, I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, and read the book. And if you can go back and see the, on one of the other shows, you can go back and see uh, John's show on when he talked about the cherries and how he came about writing and so forth. And we've talked about uh, having him come back on again, uh, just getting his schedule because he is busy everywhere uh, has been challenging, but uh, just go in and then touch uh, uh, on that. And um, that is the first part of the Medal of Honors. I couldn't do all of them because uh, there's several hundred. But uh, as as we keep going on with the show, I'll be doing more and more of them as we go. I won't do them in succession because you get tired of that. But we're going to be doing our next show will be on the uh, kind of the bloopers of the Vietnam War. Uh, things that um, mostly the things that uh, politicians did uh, to uh, kind of uh, stupid to affect the war. Uh, going out. So don't go, don't uh, worry about that. We're going to be doing that one shortly. Uh, that will be our next show. I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hope if you were out there and been in the uh, hurricane area that you're getting safe. Uh, the roads are now open uh, so we can get to you. There's so many people in the eastern part of North Carolina who are still stranded, even though some time ago the hurricane went by, but they're still stranded and trying to uh, get help. They can't get to them. 
other than by helicopter. Uh, one of our friends of the show and has been on the show, Eric Cantu, uh, who is on oxygen, uh, came back in the heat and humidity and so forth and can't get to his home. So he ended up having to go to the hospital with uh, breathing problems. So all our uh, veterans out there and, uh, and their families who uh, down in the eastern part of North Carolina, uh, pray for them, and hopefully they are uh, all doing okay or are getting all right and so forth. The, uh, we've got a couple of special things coming up that I want to tell you about. Uh, if you live anywhere around the area, uh, you'll be interested in this. I cannot believe September is, uh, is gone. Uh, in fact, uh, this coming Saturday will be a special day. I get to be 74 if I make it that far. And I just, it's just like we, just sun, uh, September just started last week, and here we are down to the end. But the 14th of October in Wake Forest, North Carolina, Ron Harris's play, Etchings in Stone, will be shown at the Renaissance Center. Now, before the show is shown, it actually, we will be having a display of uh, Vietnam paraphernalia and uh, POW panels and some other things. Uh, you'll be able to come in and pull, and we'll pull up a name of someone on the wall if you need it and give you a bio of them and so forth. But that is February. Excuse me. Go back, back. It's been one of those days. I, I'm try, now I'm talking about how fast September went, and I've already got us to February. Uh, too many, too many uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas things in the uh, Walmart now. Um, the show will start at 6.30. The display start at 5.30. So if you're anywhere in the area, I highly recommend that you come and see the play. Uh, let me tell you about the concept of play real quick because I'm uh, running short on time. You as a visitor are sitting inside the Vietnam Memorial Wall in D.C. And what you see and hear are visitors to the wall. It could be an officer who sent his men out to listening patrol or sent them out on patrol and they didn't come back. Could be a soldier who was laying beside two or three of his friends and they were killed and he survived. It could be a son who never saw his father coming to talk. It could be another soldier coming to visit his friends on the wall. It's very moving. Uh, uh, play so uh, if you come October 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st, also in Wake Forest at Joint Park. Now, if you're within uh, 100 miles or so, I would say it's going to be well worth it. Uh, the new Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, the wall that hills that it moves around, this is a new one. It's 375 feet long, it's three quarter size of the Vietnam Memorial Wall. And the middle section is seven and a half feet tall, and it's actually got uh, a granite face on it, so you can come in and do the etchings just like D.C. The opening ceremonies will actually be th Thursday the 18th at 4 o'clock uh, at Joyner Park. So if you're anywhere in the area of North Carolina or driving and you've never seen the wall, uh, this would be a good time. We're going to have uh, some helicopter there and some other displays, but the wall coming is the only time. Uh, it will be in North Carolina this year. It's like I said, it's a new wall. If you've seen the wall before, this is not the one you ever, you've seen before. So be sure to come to that and uh, listen. If you got some other events coming on uh, locally, uh, let me know for the next show, uh, which is, by the way, the next show will be uh, October 10th, and the title will be Vietnam War Blunders. And we're going to be talking about some of the blunders of, uh, that happened during the Vietnam War. Uh, that could be probably uh, five or six different shows right there, but we're going to keep it down to one. But I thank you very much for tuning in. Let us know how you think about the show. Tell all your friends about us. If you uh, like the show, let me know or let your friends know. But be sure to go on to uh, the uh, Nissan Communications uh, site or ncb.org and go to TV show and click on the uh, archives uh, show and see some of the past shows uh, in, out there. And uh, again, I'm going to sign off and tell you uh, good night, good evening, and we look forward to seeing you October 10th, which I can't believe is coming. Uh, be Thanksgiving before we know it. Thank you very much and good night.
You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.